Alright, so I have been wanting these for a long time. Anybody know what that is? That's the sticker you get with a blinking light win. Um, I backed the Kickstarter. If, uh, if anybody doesn't know what this is, it was Kickstarter funded uh, replacement for the Zero and Fortune Force connector for the original Nintendo because the original one wears out, piece of crap, gets dirty, doesn't work, whatever. So, uh, it's, I don't know how long it's been going on now. It's July 1st now, so it's probably been six months, maybe nine months in the making. Or maybe since it even ended. I can't even remember when the Kickstarter got funded and it ended. It's been a while back. Um, there is a thread on Nintendo Age. Um, a lot of people are saying that they're not getting theirs yet, and I have not gotten mine yet. I bought this one on eBay. <laughs> so I'm, I'm still... I'm still pretty upset about that because I also read on the thread that some of the people that did not back this were able to buy it off the website and I already have it. Uh, and I backed it for two, um, I wouldn't say early on in the campaign, but I am a backer and I still do not have mine and I think the only um, thing that you had to do was fill out a survey and all that survey was was what's your address, I think. And I looked and I had done it. So why I don't have mine yet, I don't know. I have no answers. There's there's not no communication, but there's not a lot of, how would you even say, week to week communication uh, from ArcadeWorks. And that's who's, yeah, they got their logo on here. ArcadeWorks is what's come up with this project. And um, a little bit of backstory is I was furious when I found out about this because I had been working on a very similar project and I mean very very similar but I I quickly lost my anger because they really really did this right okay first the name I love love the name blinking light wind because the old connector made the power light blink because it wasn't working so yes blinking light wind makes so much sense it's not even funny and their design was just easier and superior to what I was coming up with. And um, um, they even went, took it a step further, and they had somebody make a brand new connector to fit on it. And I have not, I have not opened this up. I've not plugged the game in yet. I don't know anything about it yet. But from what I've seen, I think it's going to be a big winner, and I really like that. But if they continue to screw up shipments, I don't know. Um, I don't know that there's anything patented on this. And I don't see any reason why somebody couldn't come and copy it and do their own, honestly. But they do have a big 3D printed tray replacement piece and then a PCB with two connectors on it. And of course they're using a uh, region lockout defeat device. So we should be able to plug in any region game in here and it should play without having to cut pin 4 on the lockout chip. I don't know if this one's been cut or if this is original or whatever. So, even funnier, the guy that I bought this off of is one of my customers. He says, I hope you find your package all well. I did. I haven't tried it yet, but it was well packaged. Um, side note, I think I stole this, honestly. Um, once I opened it up and seen the Nintendo, I mean, this thing is in mint condition. I, and no yellowing, no chips, nothing. It's perfect. And it's got a blinking light when installed into it. I paid $61 plus 13 shipping. Uh, steal of a deal. I think it's just because people don't know what the blinking light when is and they they it's, you know it's all it was all over the title and everything and I have I've had an eBay search going for blinking light win um, since almost I backed the Kickstarter and this is the first and only one that I've ever, that I've ever known to be on eBay there might be more I don't know um, yeah he said I had you mod a top loader NES about a year ago it still works great and then he wants to know about the HDMI mod of course everybody still wants to know. He says he still has his original NES from his childhood and plans on getting the HDMI for it. Cool. 
Um, people want to know about the HDMI mod, follow the threads and uh, follow Kevin's channel. He's doing updates regularly and I post links to those updates in the threads. I have not done any updates on my channel because I have not been a part of any of the ongoing process. He's still working out the bugs. I mean, we are like seriously this close. So, you know, I mean, there'll be, there will be news soon. Hopefully it'll be start selling soon too, but I'm not going to say that quite yet. So, anyway, Jeremy G, thank you a bunch for the uh, super cheap Blinking Light Wind installed NES. I'm going to get this hooked up and give it a shot. Okay, so, oh yeah, in the auction, also a near mint Zelda. 60 bucks. I mean, it, could, it should have went for more than that without the Blinking Light Wind in it. Okay, so, hooked up through composite. Get the purple screen. The big test is how this connector feels, right? That's pretty tight. <laughs> that is seriously tight. Wow. Yeah. It's too tight. I mean, I got big fat fingers. But I think if they would have left it sticking out, I don't know. It's, it's one of the things I was going to do with my design is I was going to leave it sticking out. This one's sticking out some, but I was going to have it sticking out further and I was going to have it at an angle so you could get people with big fingers could get on that to pull it out. But... I'm guessing that's going to last quite a while. Mm, makes me wonder if the battery's dead or if you just cleaned it. This is what I do to test the battery. Start a profile. Get the sword. Go make a couple bucks if you can, and then go die. Save it. Power it off. Power it on. It saved it, so the battery's not totally dead. Usually I'll leave it overnight just to see maybe it's just alive enough to keep it for a little bit, but not for long. So, yeah, I'm not too happy with how tight it is. I think they were trying really hard to get just the right compromise of tightness and usability, and I think they're still on a little bit of a too tight end, but the top loader is very tight too. We just have more of a cart to grab onto to get it out. So anyway, I'm going to open this up and see what it looks like. Okay, so my first six bolts are out off the bottom, so I was curious what... Uh... Yes, he did. The good thing about this kit is you can leave the RF shielding in place if you want to, and he did. And it looks like all of the original screws are present. That's something I always find when I open up Nintendo's that had a replacement ziff is you'll find screws missing. Okay, so here's my first look at the circuit board. It looks like they did an add-on board for the... there's some text on it. It says Copyright Arcade Works 2015. So it's an add-on board for the lockout chip. So there used to be a screw holding the ZIF to the tray back here no longer necessary, but they looks like they 
Well, it looks like the guy that Jeremy that who installed this went ahead and used the long screw because those are always usually a different color to put this back in place. I don't. I'm guessing that's not necessary, but it also probably doesn't hurt anything. Yeah, it's a little bit longer of a screw. So, these other couple out. If I remember right, the yeah, the tray will just slide over the top of the circuit board and top connector. I really like that idea. That's something I hadn't thought of, and that works beautifully. Really, really well. And then it's just a matter of it being connected top and bottom. And I'm guessing the bottom connector I'm just guessing it might it might just be a digikey connector. I don't know. I don't know why they would make a new one for that one. It's this one we're most worried about. But I tell you what, that looks very nice. What I'm most curious of is how close it is to a top loader connector. Hmm. I'll tell you what. It's pretty damn close if it had the holes in there. And height wise, yeah, it looks like it might be. Oh, that's really difficult to see. You know, I might have one of these that's not soldered down. Okay, so this is a top loader connector without the silver RF shielding on it. I will say... Yeah, I think, I think it fits flat. Yeah, it fits flat onto the PCB. Ooh, it is just... maybe a millimeter difference in height. If that. It is almost exactly. Yeah, I'd say maybe another, maybe even a half mil. The right length, or width, I should say. So yeah, you could definitely drill that hole in there and possibly put this into a top loader. Man, I might try to contact these guys. If anybody knows these guys and uh, maybe wants to shoot them a link to this video or give them my email, I don't know, something. I want to ask them if I could possibly get one that's not installed onto that PCB and attempt to put it into a top loader. Let's see about the pins. Yes. The pins align perfectly. No? No, they don't. Oh, man. They are not quite the same width. Looks like the holes on the top loader PCB are wider. Although, if I look at it, the pins are not bound for what looks like maybe 4 or 5 mil from the PCB, so they could easily be spread to the right width right there. You know, it's quite possible this is some weird pin arrangement that's not a standard width. And maybe they have do have like maybe a, exactly a .2 style spacing there. I don't know. .2 inch. So anyway. Oh. What? <laughs> okay. Was there uh 
some kind of uh, clearance issue here. I mean, I can clearly see the footprint for the region lockout chip right there. Well, that's interesting. I wonder if because they put it on the front, well, I don't see any any reason why it couldn't go there. Even if you had a uh, game plugged into it. Let's try to do that inside here. Even with a cart plugged into it, I don't see any clearance issue there. I wonder why they paid extra to have a PCB made. That's really weird. Uh, maybe this board was uh, not traced out correctly? I don't know. It's a very interesting issue. Well, that just that feels a lot like a yeah a lot like a top loader connector there's just not enough room out here to grab onto the cart but you know compromise and I guess I really did say so but the bottom RF shield is also still installed and I just wanted to make sure that yes pin 4 is still intact on this machine so it's completely unmodified just has the blinking light blinking light wind installed super cool let's test it and make sure that it actually works okay so I do have a stack of PAL games um, some of them are PAL exclusive Konami Hyper Soccer probably really dirty <laughs> I haven't cleaned these. I haven't used or cleaned these things in a long fucking time. Uh oh. Hey, there we go. I forgot. Um, the lockout chip is actually semi-programmable, and what I mean by that is it will work on MTSC or PAL machines. You just have to keep hitting the reset button until it actually loads the game. I think that's pretty cool, but that's that's not a uh, Arcade Works or Blinking Light Win exclusive thing. That's um, oh, I think Chris has the code out there for that, or somebody else also. Oh, that's terribly difficult. I think it's easier to push it in than it is to pull it out. There's crack out. Um, I know there's a few PAL games that just will not play on an NTS, NTSC machine, period. And I don't think this will help it. It's more of a uh, CPU PPU problem than anything else. Let's see. I don't know that playing any of the games is going to prove anything. I think just the fact that they load is proof enough that. Uh, Okay, let's see, Lion King, I think that's a PAL exclusive. It probably will not work on an NTS mach NTSC machine no matter what. Although it's worth a shot to shove it in and out once in a while. Maybe the contacts were dirty on this game. Uh, still jumping like it was before. Yeah. No big deal. Let's see. Uh, I Teenage Mutant Hero Turtles. 
And then we've got a Super Mario Brothers Tetris and Nintendo World Cup combo. Shouldn't be anything too crazy about this. I don't know if you can hear that. Sounds like it's in a... Well, it is. It's like in desperation mode already. Like you're running out of time when you get... What is it? Under... Under, under 100 seconds... 100... I shouldn't say seconds because it's not really seconds, but... When you get running low on time, it speeds the music up. But it does. It seems like the time is running out faster than uh, the U.S. version of the game. But... It seems to be playing just fine. I don't know if my if it's my controller or what, but maybe I just haven't played in a while. <laughs> anyway, that part seems to work. Um, I think I'll try some uh, U.S. pirate carts. Maybe some. Uh, Color dreams and stuff. Okay, so I got a little bit of variety here. I got a uh, Ting and Pac Man. Works fine. Let's see, the uh, Quattro Sports from Codemasters. Looks like I'm in A position. Remembered, I should still be in uh, PAL mode. I think this card's really dirty too. I don't remember if they used thicker PCBs on this one or not. Yeah, it was just dirty apparently. Yeah, it looks fine. Okay, and American Video Entertainment, Dudes with Attitude. Yes, I know you shouldn't have to blow on these, but none of these are clean. Okay, and this one was I was really curious about is I got a Racer Make Challenge 2. Uh, always used to test them on top loaders because they sold these without any kind of lockout defeat, I believe. They even sold they even sold a Nintendo that was already um, Pin 4 modded. And they even had a sticker on them from um, what's the company? Racer Mate, yeah. Racer Mate modded front loader Nintendos and sold to people. I think that was probably before the top loader came out. Yeah, this one seems to be working just fine. Cool, so the lockout part works. Great. Inclusion. I like it. I really do. Um, there's only a couple tiny changes I would make, but overall, I really like the connector. I really like the design. I really like the name. So, do I recommend it? I highly recommend it. That's why I wanted two of these. Um, I plan on putting my two that I bought into the Sharp NES TVs that I have. Um, I have two of them. I don't know if anybody knows that or not. I don't remember making a video about it, but I have two because I bought one and I still have not made any more video about that and then somebody sent me one that has the doors and to possibly have them copied and 3D printed and I still like that idea still don't have uh, any leads on a place to do that with other than maybe a couple that I never really looked into if I'm being honest I uh, just got busy doing other stuff haven't got back to the Sharp NES TVs but this would be perfect to put into that because it that thing is a is a bit of a pain in the ass to get apart to get to the connector and of course it's just a regular Nintendo Ziff connector and it's dirty and worn out you know surprised it worked when I got it actually but yeah I definitely definitely think this is a win you know I really I really hope they get their uh, orders filled and shipped soon or I'm just gonna lose all respect for the whole project, 
uh, you know, filling filling orders that were not backed in Kickstarter just doesn't sit right with me, and probably doesn't sit right with a lot of people. But if I get mine soon, I'll I'll be fine with it, you know. And, and if they can hurry up and get uh, get the website up and get more product sold, then I will probably order more in the future, and I will probably recommend that everybody that sends me a front loader to get one of these because the original Ziff is the original Ziff is the reason why that I am so pro top loader. I because you can mod the top loader for composite, you know, and because it has such a superior connector. That's why I tell everybody to buy top loaders, but that will no longer be the case if you have just this sentimental connection with the front loader, which I do too. I, I honestly, I never knew the top loader existed till about 15 years ago when I got on eBay and I was looking for a Zelda game to buy. You know, and I bought a big lot of Nintendo games that had a top loader, and that's my first top loader I ever had. And of course, I had the same problem everybody else did: is the video quality was crap. So I somehow I stumbled upon. Kevtris is uh, right up on uh, Games X about how to modify it for composite, but this eliminates the need for a top loader. I mean, even sticking the game in the top is not preferable to sticking it to the front as far as space saving reasons. You know what I mean? So I think this this is a game changer for the front loader and me.